Hello and welcome to the Shiki Science Show where in this video we're going to talk about SIRT1, a sirtuin, and how it gets down-regulated by autophagy in senescent cells and during aging. And so what I'll present in this video mostly stems from this recent Nature Cell Biology paper, SIRT1 is down-regulated by autophagy in senescence and aging. So in this video, I'll begin by giving a bit of background to the different topics involved, and then we'll look at some of the results from the study, and then I'll give some kind of outcome and conclusion to take from these results, and kind of further questions that this research raises. And there's quite a few. So yeah, hopefully this will be an interesting video. So let's get going then. So the best place to start is with SIRT1. What is SIRT1? Well, SIRT1 is one protein of a family of proteins known as sirtuins, or sirtuins, depending on what you want to say. I think it is sirtuins, and sirtuins is something I maybe said that I made up. You know what? I don't think I really know, but it also doesn't really matter. Anyway, sirtuins are a family of NAD plus dependent deacetylases. And so what this means is that they use NAD plus as a cofactor to remove acetyl groups from different proteins. Addition or removal of acetyl groups from proteins can alter the protein's function. And so sirtuins can have important roles in a variety of different biological activities depending on the proteins that they deacetylate. In the case of SIRT1, it mainly functions through deacetylation of histone substrates. And so histones are proteins that have DNA wrapped around them and compact into the form known as chromatin within your nucleus. So by removing acetyl groups from these histone proteins, it can alter how the DNA is compacted within a nucleus. And this can have a variety of impacts within a cell. Moreover, SIRT1 is also known to deacetylate my favourite protein, P53. And so by deacetylating a variety of different proteins, SIRT1 can impinge on the different nutrient signalling pathways within a cell, and its activity is thought to promote stress resistance and prevent ageing, and this is further supported by the fact that the levels of NAD+, the cofactor that SIRT1 depends on, decreases during ageing and potentially contributes to an age-related reduction in overall sirtuin activity. And so activating sirtuins by using compounds such as resveratrol or by increasing the levels of NAD+, by using NAD+, precursors, are being currently highly researched to try and treat different age-related conditions. But what's the point of trying to activate a protein if that protein isn't even present? And so the reason that I say this is because the authors of this current paper previously reported that the levels of the SIRT1 equivalent found in yeast, SIRT2, declines following replicative aging, which is a cause of yeast aging. However, the mechanism as to why this decline was observed and what happens in humans hasn't yet been fully addressed. And so that's what the authors of this paper try to examine in this latest publication. So first off, they tried to see how the protein levels of SIRT1 changes during the development of cellular senescence. So why cellular senescence? Well, cellular senescence is one of the hallmarks of ageing, with the number of senescent cells increasing with age. And so senescent cells are cells that have entered a state of cell cycle arrest, and this can be induced by a variety of different upstream stresses within a cell. Interestingly, overexpression of SIRT1 has already been shown to delay senescence in a human cell line. So what actually happens to SIRT1 in a senescent cell? So if we take a look at this first figure, which can only be described as a beautiful set of Western blots, they are very nice, we can see that in different types of senescence induction, there's a decline in SIRT1 protein level. And this can be seen here in terms of population doubling. So this is just continual passaging of a cell line until it stops growing. And as you can see, the SIRT1 levels decline during this time period. We can also see it decline in oncogene-induced senescence. And we can also see it in DNA damage-induced senescence. And so the two important things to take from this is firstly that the SIRT1 decline occurs at the protein level, not at the mRNA level. And so this suggests that the protein is being degraded. Secondly, this decline in SIRT1 was not seen in quiescence. And so what was causing SIRT1 to get degraded? Well, one way that proteins can get degraded within a cell is via the proteasome. 
However, when the authors inhibited the proteasome in these cells, it didn't prevent the decline in SIRT1 levels. Instead, it was found that SIRT1 protein decline was dependent on autophagy. Now, explaining autophagy probably deserves a video of its own, but I'll do my best to explain it briefly here. Effectively, autophagy derives from the ancient Greek meaning self-devouring, which reflects this natural process within a cell whereby it removes unnecessary or dysfunctional components. So far, there are three different forms of autophagy. The best understood is macroautophagy, which is more simply just referred to as autophagy. And what happens in macroautophagy is different cytoplasmic components, such as proteins, can get encapsulated within vesicles known as autophagosomes and these can then fuse with an organelle within a cell known as the lysosome where the components can then get degraded and eventually recycled. But this is where it gets interesting because as I've just mentioned autophagy removes cytoplasmic components. However SIRT1 is often found within a nucleus where it can deacetylate these histone proteins and p53. However, if you look at SIRT1 localization within a cell, as you can see in this figure here, you can see that in the senescent cells, you can see these small little puncture whereby SIRT1 is actually localizing to the cytoplasm. And summarizing a lot of the data in a very short way, what was shown was that the way SIRT1 goes from the nucleus into the cytoplasm and enters autophagic degradation is by interacting with one of the components of the autophagy machinery, LC3. And so this is interesting because autophagy is commonly thought to only be involved in degrading cytoplasmic components. But SIRT1 isn't alone because this lab had previously shown that another protein that declines during senescence, lamin B1, is also degraded via an LC3 dependent nuclear lysosomal transport system. And so based on the data, it seems that this LC3 dependent autophagy degradation is enhanced during senescence because the interaction between SIRT1 and LC3 increases, but the precise mechanism as to why this happens is not so clear. But besides looking at senescence, the authors also looked at SIRT1 protein levels during aging. And the way they did this was by dissecting different organs and tissues from young and naturally aged mice. What they saw was that the spleens, testes and thymus of the older mice showed reduced levels of SIRT1 protein compared with the younger mice. But it was interesting to note that SIRT1 protein decline wasn't observed in all tissues. For example, the heart, liver, kidneys, pancreas, uterus, lungs and muscle didn't show a decline. And like with the human cell lines in the mouse tissue, by inhibiting autophagy, the levels of SIRT1 could also be rescued. So to bring all this information together, this study shows that autophagy contributes to the down-regulation of SIRT1 protein during cellular senescence and during aging of several mouse tissues and cells. So what can we take from this study? Well firstly, it adds support to nuclear substrates also being targets of the autophagy pathway, but more on from that, it also potentially provides a new target in the treatment of reducing the severity of senescence. For example, if the degradation of SIRT1 could be inhibited, it may delay senescence onset. And then this may synergize with SIRT1 activators such as resveratrol, because in at least one of the figures in this paper, resveratrol wasn't able to prevent the degradation of SIRT1. However, other studies show that it can activate SIRT1 activity. And so by preventing degradation and activating the activity of SIRT1, you can see how it could have a combinatorial impact. But this actually raises another question. Why would a senescent cell want to get rid of SIRT1? And so I'm going to speculate a little, which is something I don't tend to do too much on this channel because I like to base my opinions on facts. But anyway, during senescence, there are lots of changes that occur within the nucleus. And a lot of that's due to the chromatin rearranging and SIRT1 deacetylates histone proteins, which are really important in this process. And also it deacetylates P53, if I forgot to mention that earlier. And so by degrading SIRT1 and removing it from the nucleus, it may help in this reorganisation of chromatin within the nucleus to establish senescence. 
which is interesting and cool and I guess would be interesting to follow up in further research. And more on from that, it'd be very important to try and work out what other proteins besides SIRT1 and lamin B1 that seem to get targeted by this autophagy mediated degradation, especially if ways of inhibiting this process is going to be sought after because it'd be good to examine if there's going to be any negative consequences. And also just whilst I was making this video, I was thinking about how the CERT1 regulation could be impacting on the circadian rhythm because I mentioned in a previous video how CERT1 activity was necessary for increasing one of the components, BMAL1, and its binding on DNA. And yeah, this pretty much is kind of opening Pandora's box. I don't really know how the circadian rhythm gets impacted in senescence. And so yeah, I think that is a whole area in itself that's worth investigation. But set one is obviously important in this process. And well, it's important in lots of processes. So if you can take anything away from this video, you should take away that. Anyway, as we've come to the end, I hope you have learned something in this video. And as always, thanks for listening.